Hey there, and welcome to RAM's basics tutorial series. If you need more information about RAM, you can look up a demo with our team using the link in the description. You can also create a free RAM account and use the templates below to draw along with me as we go through this tutorial. Let's dive in. In this tutorial, we're going to review how to draw in RAM. We're going to take a look at some of the fundamentals you need to start your drawing. So first thing first, note that from the RAM canvas, you can, of course, import different types of files. In this project, I have actually an image that I had to retrace, but you can import DWG and DXF files, which you can then override. We're going to talk about how to add walls to your drawing, how to add zones within wall enclosures, use some blocks, add annotations, and give you just a brief overview of everything you need to go to get started. On the top left, when you want to start drawing, you can organize some of your properties to start to draw. For example, you can change there to wireframe mode and also add a grid. Some architects, designers, and others feel comfortable uh, drawing this way where the minimal line weight uh, is represented. I like to draw with the um, wireframe disabled and for now I don't want the grid either, uh, but basically important to know that they're there. And of course you have our snapping points, which are um, indicated down here on the bottom. You can toggle all to disable them. Of course, usually you'd like to enable them. Uh, so when you're drawing your elements, things snap to uh, corners, centers, and so on and so forth. Let's zoom into this uh, building's um, foyer and add a wall enclosure or like an entry room to this building to demonstrate our tools. Important to note that RAN has different drawing tools. If you look at the bottom toolbar, you'll note that RAN has the classic CAD line and shape commands. So polyline, rectangle, and so on and so forth, including the guidelines. I'm going to grab a guideline now because I want to draw a wall from RAN's wall feature. Uh, clicking the guideline, you can change its orientation right here or by clicking its um, shortcut. I want to place it here to the specific angle. So after clicking it, I'm also going to select a command. Again, you have the classic CAD commands like copy, move, offset, rotate. In this case, I want to rotate my guideline to align it with this building's um, structure. And let's copy this and place another one here. Other than the line work, you can also grab Rand's wall tool. This will draw a wall enclosure rather than just lines. And to demonstrate it, I first want to set its style and layer. Whenever I start activating a command or place something on the drawing, you'll note that on the right, there are two active properties, the active layer on which I draw my wall and the active style, which is how my wall will look like. For the style is where I can change the properties of my wall entity. Uh, I can browse around uh, Hatcher and text libraries, give it different fills. And essentially there is a dedicated tutorial about this topic. So feel free to take a look at that. You can also browse saved walls that you have in your um, wall style library that you'll create. Let's go for this one for this wall. And when it comes to the active layers, you can find all the layers in your model on the left panel and you can create new layers, delete layers and manage your layers from here. When we're talking about a specific entity like the wall I'm about to draw, I can change uh, the layer that is going to be drawn on. So let's maybe just place this wall on a um, new layer uh, for the sake of the demonstration and ready to go. One more thing about walls, you can find here that you can change their alignment from uh, side to side to center, uh, and this can also be toggled with shortcut S, as you can see indicated. All right, I'm going to start drawing my wall, and I've already prepared my grid so you can see that it snaps to it correctly. I can either draw this manually or by inputting a value. Um, for now, let's just place this wall here. I'll do another one and you see that it's already perpendicular to my drawing thanks to my grid and snapping. Once I've placed a wall, I can also move it. So in this case, I have a shaft here. So let's move it to the exterior part of my grid line. And basically, you know that again, the walls are dynamic. So if I want to change this and refine it, let's say I want it to be 2.5 um, meters exactly, uh, I can input that value. Talking about units and uh, values, note that you can change between uh, metric to imperial system, millimeters, feet, and so on and so forth. All right, our walls are all set. And now let's talk about adding zones into your wall enclosure. I'm going to select my zone and place it within um, this room. And you see that my zone has um, traced the shape of this room and created an automatic tag with a square meter count of the space. If I change this uh, wall location, the square meter count will adjust accordingly, as you can see right now. And this is super handy um, once you're drawing. 
Another thing to note about the zone is that, of course, this can also be altered in terms of style and layer. If you go to the right panel, you're going to find all of this uh, zones property. And here is where you can change it to have maybe a realistic texture. In this case, we can choose um, a tile, a uh, parquet, um, and also customize these tiles. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, that's something that you'd normally maybe do in uh, Photoshop or as a second pass of your uh, drawing process can be done all in one place within Rayon. So I just gave it a different scale, maybe some opacity, and I might want to rotate this uh, as well. Now let's name the zone. I'll select the surface and change its name on the top right. Let's call it um, Entrant. There you go. You can also, of course, change the font, um, the size and the style of your text. So let's just make this a bit bigger for now. Um, and as I mentioned, there will be more information about how to uh, stylize your annotations, your dimensions and your drawings in the style tutorial. But for now, I think we're pretty set with a solid start. And the next thing I want to review is how to add blocks onto your canvas. Let's add a door to this room. I'm going to access the block library on the top left panel where you see all um, these different blocks that already exist in my model and the tab with new blocks. In Rayon, you can create your custom blocks and curate the blocks in them. You can create organization blocks, which will be shared with your teammates to standardize your work. And there's more than 4K different blocks from different use cases for you to drag and drop on your canvas. So kitchen appliances, commercial, residential, gym, uh, you name it. I'm going to use a search bar to uh, look for an opening block, um, as in a door or a window. Grab a door and drag and drop it onto the canvas. The nice thing about random doors and walls is that they snap. Uh, so as you can see, my door snapped directly into my wall um, and rotated it accordingly. I can change its orientation here. So flip it uh, horizontal or vertical. Um, let's flip it this direction right now. The other great thing about Rand's blocks is that they have representations in front, side, and top views. So this door essentially already exists in my family block library as a front and side view representation. For example, if I visit my section, and of course we'd need to alter the section to uh, add this building, but you can create obviously sections uh, and elevations in Rand as well. Um, and all these blocks that you have in one point of view um, exist in all three. So if we just grab this shower head, for example, I can copy it here and you can al always access your blocks family by placing it on your canvas and then changing its representation, selecting it, going to its representation and then changing its point of view. All right. Note that we also have symbol blocks, uh, title blocks, anything you need to set up your uh, drawing presentation in terms of layout as well, um, on top of just the different furniture that you see here. Of course, you can also import DWG blocks and create your own blocks um, and just turn them into a block by clicking on the plus button uh, below. If you import DWG blocks, they'll already be inherited as blocks in Rhino. Next up is annotations. You'll see that I already have plenty of annotations populating my drawing. So section lines, leaders, text. Let's add uh, some tags and text onto this addition that we just created. And we can access those from the bottom toolbar as well. Here you have anything that has to do with adding information like arrows and text. We'll grab the dimension tool and note that you can swap between different mode commands in Rayon. So just take a look at the bottom tagline when you're activating a command and see if there's any options you can activate. In this case, I want to place chained commands. And what I also want to do is before applying them onto my canvas, take a peek at their style property. They'll start off as a default with just freeform styles. And there may be already style definitions that were saved in this model that I can just repeat. For example, let's start with just placing a normal or default dimension on my canvas. Uh, that's one, two, and three. And as you can see, they're um, big, uh, bulky. Let's refine these by selecting them. You can always select by clicking down shift or just a small tip. You can go ahead and go to select similar in Rayon and select elements that have the same properties, like the same style, the same layer, uh, the same type or uh, the same box. Once I did that, I can batch change their properties. I can change their uh, colors right here. For example, uh, I can change their uh, size, of course, um, and I can change other properties. So their stroke line color can also be edited, their ending, so arrowhead, dot, and so on and so forth. 
In this case, I want to harmonize them with the drawing that already live on the canvas. I, I might just choose this drawing type. And there you go. The benefit of saving your style and applying it to elements on your canvas is that then if you edit it, it edits across your model. So for example, I can go ahead and edit this style right now. If I wanted to just edit this specific dimension, I could detach it. But when I edit the style and then change its, um, let's do again, uh, color, you'll see that it edits it uh, across. So let's maybe leave it at blue for now. We can also add leader here, indicating information about this door or just floating text. There you have it. We've reviewed some of the fundamentals in RAN, like the fact that you can import your drawing and then retrace it, either using the line tools or the wall and zone tools. Uh, you can add blocks from the RAN block library and then add annotations, text, dimensions, and more to convey your project. Each one of these topics has its own tutorial in our YouTube channel. So be sure to go ahead uh, and watch those to learn more about how to set up your drawing, how to work with blocks, how to work with styles, and more. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to book a demo with our team by using the link in the description. You can also join our community and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Have a good one.